Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. Sorry, Cleo. My dog just popped up like, what the fuck, dude? What's going on, everybody? How are you? How's it going? Did you guys watch any sports lately? Oh, Jesus, what happened with the baseball there? Um, Jesus Christ. What a difference a couple of fucking days makes. My God. The fucking Cleveland Indians up three games to one looking to end their streak. Dude, did I call it or did I fucking call it? Huh? What did I say? Did I say it to you guys? I thought I, I said that this is just fitting. Did I say that on Monday? Because I think it was three games to two by then. I said that whatever team was going to fucking win was going to look like they were going to lose. So they tortured the shit out of their fans. Whatever team was going to lose was going to look like they were going to win because they take their emotions right through the fucking stratosphere and then slam them right down on the pavement. And game seven was literally the microcosm that, that the, the way that whole fucking game played out was basically if you ever wanted to know what it was like to be a Chicago Cub or a Cleveland Indian fan. And the only reason why they both didn't face plan each other is because mathematically it was not an option. Somebody had to win the fucking thing, but neither team was just, neither team was just going to win this fucking series. That was basically it. That was the point I was trying to make the other day. They were going to torture the fuck out of their fans to the point that even if they did win the thing, you'd still have some sort of nervous fucking twitch or a tick for like three days afterwards. Jesus Christ, what a game. If you didn't watch game seven, I feel bad for you as a fucking human being, you know, as it's fucking 71 degrees in Cleveland, Ohio in November. Dad, no reason to be concerned. Let's play ball. Oh, Jesus. Enjoy it. Enjoy it while it lasts, people, before we get to the tipping point where this global warming thing isn't a fun thing in November anymore. (laughs) Anyways, back to Bread and Circus. Let's talk a little baseball here. Talking baseball. Um, Congratulations to the 2016 World Series champions, the fucking Chicago Cubs. I never thought I'd, I'd, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I guess I thought I'd say it at some point when I finally saw the Red Sox win it. Congratulations to the Cubs fans. I've been there, you know, and I only, I only last, you know, out of the 86 years, I only saw 36 years of it, right? Of course, you know, whatever. The first 10, you're just a kid running around fucking sticking shit at fucking, you know, you're poking dead skunks and stuff. You don't give a fuck about a curse, right? Some from my teen years on. I, I've suffered for 20 fucking years, if I'm honest. Uh, I vaguely remember 78 and, you know, 86 was my, was my christening as a Red Sox fan. Like, Hey Bill, this is what it's going to be like. Buckle up. Right. So I've been there and Cleveland Indian fans, my condolences. I've been there too. I've fucking been there too, but what a fucking game that was. Jesus Christ. And you knew it. The Cubs had to go out early. They had to score a bunch of fucking runs because as the game went on, it was going to tip in favor of the Indians because they had they had fresher arms and everybody was fucking shitting on uh, oh fucking uh, the, the guy from the Devil Rays I don't know anybody's names by the way I don't know anybody's names so just fucking deal with it and they were all shitting on him for putting Chapman in there I'm on the death chart now so I can look at the face and know who the fuck I'm talking about right but keep putting Chapman dude he's, he's overusing him what is he doing it's like dude they've played three elimination games in a row you gotta use the guy don't you think he brought him in a little too early. I love when people say that. They haven't even coached a little league fucking team to a victory yet, and they're questioning what a major league. I mean, I guess you can question it, but. And it's always like, well, the guy who I would have put in who didn't go in, so you have no idea what would, ha- would have happened if you put him in. I'm going to hypothetically say that we then would have won the fucking game or it would have gone smoother, so I look smarter. They had to put that guy in there, and. Um, what was, what was the big problem? You put the fucking guy in, instead of throwing 105, he was throwing 98. I mean, well, what are you going to do? You had to do it. Cubs go up. I can't remember what the fuck happened. There was so many goddamn twists and turns. What was it? It was like five to one. Then like a wild pitch or whatever. And fucking lawhead. Jesus, you want to see the funniest fucking, if you want to see the funniest like, like run a tweets. Go look at Jason Lawhead's Twitter. That fucking guy, he quit in the fifth inning. 
You know, I'm just going to wait till the pitchers and catchers report. Right? And then fucking two seconds later, wild pitch. It's five to fucking three. It's still a game. Oh, I, I never saw a guy. He just well, he was packing it in, packing it in, packing it in. Um, and he said he wasn't going to tweet anymore until the catchers and pitchers reported. And then all of a sudden, they fucking tie it up. That home run. Who the fuck can I got to get his name right. The way it's Cleveland's death chart. Davis, right? Was that who it was? The left fielder? Holy shit. And I got to tell you something right now. I flip-flopped so many times who the fuck I wanted to see win. Initially, I was with Cleveland because everybody wanted the Cubs fans. I saw that 30 for 30 with Bartman, and I was just like, you know what? These guys, they're not the fucking uh, salt of the earth people that they try to make them out to be. The happy-go-lucky, take your shirt off. Maybe we win, maybe we lose. As long as we enjoy the America's pastime, these aren't who these people are. They're just like me. Every Red Sox, every Yankees, every Philly fan. I actually argued with a uh, Yankee fan today. He was going like, fuck the Cubs. That Steve Bartman shit, they ruined that kid's life. That wouldn't have happened in New York. I was like, get the fuck out of here. That wouldn't have happened in New York. It would have happened in New York. It would have happened in Boston. But you know what? In fairness to Cubs fan base, what that really was was the morning, you know, the shock jock guys. And what they did was they they stirred up the lower 10%, 15% of people. You know, as pissed as I would be or whatever, there's no fucking way. Would you really get on a phone and start making death, death threats? I mean, really think about the level of mouth breathing moron that you would have to be to take it to that level. Um, so I, I don't, so whatever. So initially that's kind of, I was, I'm a contrarian. Everyone was for the Cubs. So I was rooting for the fucking Indians. And then what happens? They went up three games to one and I'm texting with a couple of my Indian buddies. And one of them, it, she, she's just so fucking like, you know, when you, they were winning uh, game four and it was like, you know, I don't know, nine to something. And he was going, dude, I, I, I hope, I hope it goes all the way up to like fucking, I always score 19 runs. I hope they run out of pitchers. And immediately I was thinking like, Jesus Christ, how quickly the suffering forget. Why would you wish that on him? You just want to win, right? And then he was going like, now we got LeBron. This is just the beginning. We're going to go on a run like they were going to stick. And, and somebody tweeted or, or texted Cleveland title town after two fucking titles. You don't even have a fucking hockey team. And, and, the, and the Browns, don't you, you lost your fucking team. You know, the city treated them so shitty, they thought Baltimore was a better fucking option. All right? You, you're far from fucking... T- so then they started bugging me. I'm just a contrarian cunt. I didn't have a dog in the fight. And I was happy that one... To be honest with you, I was happy for Cleveland or Chicago that one team's uh, misery was going to end. Right? So at that point, then I was like, well, fuck this. I'm going to root for the Cubs. Right? I got a couple of relatives. They're Cubs fans. And I got to say, ah, fuck it. You know, I'll, I'll go with this shit. Then I was kind of like, yeah, but I like the Indians, man. I like, I like Cleveland. You know, Cleveland needs a fucking hand, dude. That downtown area, it's gradually coming back. Every time I come there, it looks better. I love the Midwest. Well, Chicago's Midwest, too, but I don't know. That's kind of like the New York City of the Midwest. Uh, tremendously underrated city still. But anyways, so it's still kind of hanging in there for them. And uh, you know what the final tipping point was when Mike Francesca trashed the fucking Cubs for showing Bill Murray going like, I don't want to see that. You know, and the whole Bill Murray, uh, Daffy Duck thing, uh, you know, it didn't work for me. Mike Francesca, who gives a fuck what works for you and what doesn't? Your team's not in the playoff. All right? You're a non-factor. Your team's a non-factor. It, the funniest fucking thing, man, I, I, Yankee fans, they cannot handle the fact that other people are winning championships and having a good fucking time. And that's sort of the unwritten rule because whenever the Yankees win a World Series, which God knows is quite a bit, like ESPN, their, their stock line is they'll go, and all is right in the baseball world again. It's like, aren't you guys supposed to pretend that you're kind of rooting for any, you're not really rooting for anybody? Um, so anyways, fuck Mike Francesco. Mike Francesco, he's one of those fucking guys who doesn't realize that he's just as stupid as I am. He's one of those guys where he's just been doing it so fucking long that he really he forgets that he's just commenting on shit that doesn't matter. Dude, you're talking about a baseball game. okay? all the shit that has happened, even in New York, fucking New York City, all the shit that's fucking happened there. The cataclysmic world events that have happened there and the level of seriousness that that guy takes himself Oh, with his stethoscope fucking headphones. That guy, he drives me up the fuck. I've never been more happy than for fucking Mad Dog when he got the fuck out of there. Jesus Christ, to be looking across from that pompous ass 
Is there anything worse than the box seats fucking sports fan that is just so fucking impressed with themselves and their dumb sweaters and shit? I don't know. You give them a little more fancy a seat. I'm telling you, it's, it's like the space shuttle for their ego, and they just go right up over. Yeah, the Daffy Duck thing didn't work for me. Oh, oh God, well, maybe, maybe the Cubs ought to fucking, you know, rethink their relationship with Bill Murray. <laughs> hey, Mike, are you the fucking Bill Murray of, of, of sports broadcasters? Fucking jack off. He's just another guy who watches sports and never gets on a treadmill. I don't understand. How can you look at all those guys in that level of shape? And when you're at the end of the game, when you go in to brush your teeth, you, you don't look at yourself like, Jesus Christ, can I at least eat a fucking salad every once in a while? Oh, this feels great. This feels great to totally overreact to what he said. It's a fun thing. So anyways, um, congratulations to the Chicago Cubs. You got the fucking goat off your back, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It was the dumbest curse ever, okay? You can't bring livestock to a baseball game, all right? You know, what you really did is you did not have a curse the same way the Red Sox didn't have a curse. What it really was was you were fans of an unbelievably inept franchise for a long fucking time. And uh, thank God, you know, we finally got Theo Epstein. We finally got Terry Francona. We finally got the ownership that the Red Sox have, and it all came together. And we finally did what teams like the fucking Yankees, the Cardinals, the Patriots, teams like that, that know how to fucking win. Well, actually, you can't say the Patriots. That's even modern, modern era. The Celtics back in the day. Um, you know, as much as I hate the fucking Yankees, like their, their, their front office, their ownership, their franchise, their farm system, it's the shit. It is the shit. I um, mean, you can't get mad at them for starting their own network, for being smart enough to do that. I don't, I don't hate on any of that shit. But that whole fucking thing where all is right if, if they win it, is, that, that's a little, that goes a little beyond. But other than that, I don't begrudge their fucking 27 championships. I really don't. Um, having said that, uh, we finally got the right people in place. So you finally got the right people in place. And having said that, um, whoever was going to win last night, the Cubs or the Indians was an automatic one way fucking uh, ticket for either Theo Epstein or Terry Francona into, uh, into the hall of fame. So congratulations to Theo Epstein um, without a doubt. I mean, that guy ended the curse of the babe and the curse of the goat. I mean, he needs a nickname at this point, something, right? I, I can't think of it right now, but I'm just saying that guy at 86, what's 86, and 108, that's 186 and 194 years of suffering that fucking guy just ended, you know? He looks like a champ, too. You see the guy He's in his 40s? He still looks like he used to be an astronaut. I mean, the guy's just crushing on so many fucking levels. It, you, you can really see how people would try to root against him. And um, whatever, man, the Indians will definitely be back. I got to be honest with you. I'm still more of an Indians fan than I am a Cubs fan, but it was so fucking great. Like seeing the look of joy on, on uh, Bill Murray's face. And by the way, uh, what Francesca, like, did you not enjoy seeing that? Watching him just fucking let out, however old he is, was all just fucking coming out. It was tremendous. So um, it was great. It was what a fucking game, man. Jesus Christ, what a game. Oh, and then I forgot the fucking rain delay. And then they tie it up. They fucking tie it up. And I was like, oh, my God. This is on, it's, it's going to reverse again. Like the way everyone's like, everyone just th- kind of thought the Cubs were going to win it. And then the Indians go up three games to one. They're like, oh my God, the Indians are going to win it. Then it reverses. Then it looks like the Cubs are going to win it. And then the Indians tie it fucking back up again. You're like, fuck. I know I'm getting hyped up here, but dude, when, when, when does baseball get this fucking exciting, right? And then it starts fucking raining and they bring out the fucking tarp. That's the funniest shit. And that's one of the great, that's like the, the sport within the sport of baseball is the fucking rain delay. And uh, they got to put a book. If there's never been a book put out yet about people just talking about what goes through your head as you're going through a fucking rain delay and you have to sit there and, and fill up three hours of fucking broadcast time telling your stories. I mean, that, that's when you got to hope that you got like a, uh, a Pete Rose there. You know what I mean? You got to have some guy with a zillion fucking stories that knows how to tell a story. Um, dude, he, how great was he? He was fucking phenomenal. A-Rod was great. The big hurt, all of those guys, when you got like Hall of Famers sitting there, you know, just the way they break down, but nobody breaks it down like Pete Rose. Jesus Christ. You know, all the games that that guy's played, all the experience he's had, and then you combine gambling on it. So he took it to a whole other level of the way he looks at numbers. I mean, the guy is like second to none with his analysis. (laughs) 
<laughs> By the way, Jason Hayward, huge fan. That fucking catch he made, I forget what game when he leapt up and then had to reach back, and then when he fired the, he threw that strike like Dave Parker in the All-Star game. Granted, Dave threw it from the warning track to the to home plate. When he threw it in second to get that guy out, kill the fucking momentum. As great as that was, the worst at bat of the fucking uh, of the series was his one of his last at bats. Dude, did you see the two pitches he fucking swung at? I mean, Jesus Christ. 50 Cent could have struck him out at that at bat. I mean, it was it was like you know when they just they take some fucking guy like 50 cent out of the crowd you think, oh my god it's 50 cent and he just goes out and throws the ball you're like oh my god he really is an artist um you got to look that up by the way i think i tweeted when he did that i said 50 cent didn't throw that ball curtis jackson did you have to see it man it's just like it was uh i don't know it was like watching john lester try to throw to first base which i had no idea that he he won't even do it how nuts is that that's like, uh, it was like Chuck, Nog- Chuck Knobloch, Steve Sachs times fucking two. At least one of the videos that I saw. Thank God that he didn't. But um, anyways, um, my condolences to the city of Cleveland, man. I, I really, I love that city and uh, Municipal Stadium. All that shit back in the day that I grew up watching. Like I said, one of my relatives lived out there when I was a kid and he kind of would always be rooting for him. And, you know, he was cool, so I would fucking root for him, too. And, but, he, of course, Red Sox first. So I always kind of had that thing with them and the Tigers. They're kind of like the surrogates if the, uh, the Red Sox aren't in it. Um, and I also like the Royals. And I like the A's. I don't know. I like the Pirates. I like the Cardinals. I like the Giants. And I like the Dodgers back in the day. So I, I, there's a lot of teams that I fucking, that, you know, they all take a deep second to fucking the, the Red Sox aren't in it. You know what I mean? So anyways, I even rooted for the Yankees in 2001. After 9-11, I was like, all right, fuck it. I got to set this shit aside. And then the fucking Diamondbacks beat him. <laughs> it's like, fuck, I should have been rooting for these guys the whole time. I would have jinxed them. So anyways, congratulations. Um, and Cleveland, hey, man, you're next. Or I guess I should be rooting for the Arizona Cardinals because they have the longest uh, drought, I guess, with the championship since 1947 when they were the Chicago Cardinals. Um, and then they went to, uh, I don't, I can't remember what the fucking lineage of that team is, but like, I don't give a fuck about them because they've lived in so many fucking cities. Like the, the, the city doesn't carry the pain. Does that make sense? Let me look up Arizona Cardinals right now. And I'm surprised it didn't just pop up on my thing. You know, your computer like listens to you now. Actually it did. Arizona Cardinals. You ever do that? You just say, yeah, fucking uh, pumpernickel bread. Uh, what's in pumpernickel bread? You write, you write like P-U and then it says pumpernickel bread. Like your phone will do that. Like, well, what the what are the fucking odds that came up? You're listening to me. It's that fucking robot lady in the phone. She listens, right? She listens to, oh yeah, she's listening to you. Let's see here. Official site. No, it's a pretty sad case. You got to go to Wikipedia to find out their fucking history the quickest. Actually, maybe it isn't. All right, here we go. The Cardinals, let's see, they were the Chicago Cardinals, 1920 to 1943. They took a year off during the war, 1945 to 1959. Uh, oh, they were the Cardinals' card pit in 1944. I thought they had the Eagles in Pittsburgh and made the Steagles. Anyway, St. Louis Cardinals, 1960 to 1987. Phoenix Cardinals, 88 to 93, 94 to present. Arizona. So they've been, all right, they've been in, well, Jesus, they've been in Phoenix for fucking almost 30 years. Wow. They've been there longer than they were in St. Louis. How, oh, Jesus, how about that? Uh, and they were in Chicago basically for 29 years. Isn't that something? So they were in Fe- Arizona the longest, then Chicago, then St. Louis. So anyways, I don't really count that fucking shit. Let's see the longest droughts. I can see the next person I give a fuck about past Cleveland, right? Let's see. Longest sports droughts. Bing, bang, boom. Drought in sports. Uh, Longest active droughts in sports. When was this made? This was done three hours ago. Okay. So this should be fairly accurate, correct? So it goes the Arizona Cardinals, then the Cleveland Indians. Just give me the fucking list. All right. Arizona Cardinals. Shut up. All right, 69 years. Cleveland Indians, 68 years. Sacramento Kings, 1951 
they were like the Rochester Royals, I think, or some shit like that. Uh, they haven't won in 65 years. Detroit Lions haven't won since 1957. The Atlanta Hawks, when they were the St. Louis Hawks, 1958. Uh, then the Philadelphia Eagles, 1960. Um, Texas Rangers, never. 1955, never won a championship. Tennessee Titans, they used to be the Houston Oilers. They won an AFL title in 1961. There's a couple more here. Houston Astros, never. 54 fucking years. Um, San Diego Chargers, 1963, 53 years since their AFL title. And then the Toronto Maple Leafs. So if we're going to go sport by sport, uh, the longest drought in football is the Arizona Cardinals. Baseball is the Cleveland Indians. Basketball is the Sacramento Kings. And hockey is the Toronto Maple Leafs. There you go. 69 years, 68, 65, and 49. So there you go, Toronto. Shit, these other guys, they got, they got fucking 20 years on you. Um, and actually, nowadays, when there's that many fucking teams, you only got 32 teams to go 50 years, considering one of them's going to, you know, win a couple, two, three, if not four or five over 30 years, right? It's very easy now to go 40 years. All right, Bill, I think we've had enough of the sports talk. All right, well, maybe I have too. Let's talk about flat top grills, shall we? By the way, I have not called Lawhead yet. I'm going to wait three days. Uh, I'm going to run, run into him. I'm going to give him a hug, you know, tell him, you know, you still got the NBA title. You got a little hyped up there. Oh, my God, the agony. Jay law you remember that, the agony of defeat? Do you remember when the ski jump guy went off the fucking ski jump? If you look at Jay Lawhead's Twitter feed, dude, it's fucking hilarious. Because he's not joking. He's literally, he goes off the ski jump like five times every game. You know, and then he's just laying face down. You're like, is he dead? Is he dead? And then he somehow pops his head up, shakes his hair out. He puts the fucking goggles back on and he fucking gradually walks back up the stairs again. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's, it's really entertaining. Anytime there's a big Cleveland game, I recommend following Jay Lawhead, Jason Lawhead on, um, on Twitter, you know? Just sit back and just watch the. It's it's tremendous. It's it's an amazing thing. It's it's a great sports book. Every fuck and just just in tweets. It's incredible. Hey, shout out to Steve Bartman, everybody. Hey, dude, stay in hiding, man. Don't don't let those cunts draw you back out. All right, they had their chance to be friends with a great person like you. All right, you know they're gonna try to ask you to go to the the, the parade. You know, oh, all's forgiven. All's forgiven. You know, it was just fucking thirteen years of hell. Um, do you guys think he goes, do you think he goes back? I don't think he does. He said no to 30 for 30. He kind of seems like he would just, he, you know, he's a very commendable person. He was somebody that has no desire for fame in this century, which is, uh, you know, more than I can say for myself or in, in 90% of the other people out there. So God bless him. Congratulations once again to all the Chicago faithful, uh, to the other 80% that showed up. Congratulations to you too. <laughs> <laughs> the bandwagons. Um, my condolences to Cleveland fans. You did get the Cavs this year. Uh, you do have Terry Francona. You got great players. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we won one with Manny Ramirez and everybody else. There's so many like the Phillies, Yankee fans, Red Sox fans all should have been rooting for Cleveland because we all used your fucking CCs, your Manny Ramirez, your Jim Tomies. We all used those guys to get our championships. And uh, also that pitcher who fucking pitched for everybody. I forget his fucking name. It wasn't Kurt Floyd. Was it Cleo? Was it? 